right, uh, good afternoon. Um, um, I, first, I'd like to uh, thank Song Mei for organizing this um, um, symposium. And, and I, we have been seeing um, many impressive presentations uh, covering uh, a variety of uh, applications, interpretation, and other fields. So, hopefully, um, what I'm going to talk about is a di di different flavor. Um, talk about urban deliveries uh, of freight in general. So uh, before I uh, um, talk about this, uh, you know, the details, I'd like to introduce a little bit about the background of this project. It's actually a small part of this so-called urban um, off-hour off delivery project um, currently is going on in this, um, New York City. It's uh, led by uh, RPI, my colleague, uh, Hossein Rovers, and also uh, it's funded by USDOT, but we work with New York City DLT, which is a very important um, partner, and also Rutgers University. Um, I listed only the you know the core team that work on this um, you know topic, and actually we have a large group you know um, from this uh, mainly uh, New York City DOT, Rutgers, and RPI work on the, the project. And uh, actually, I have Sandra, who used to work with us, and now uh, moved to another state agency. Um, thanks for being here. Um, so the um, topic really um, about how to use GPS data to measure the freight performance. Uh, we have been seeing in the morning about uh, maybe passenger cars, you know, how to identify uh, trip end and trip start. Um, when you talk about freight, it's a totally different uh, behavior, a totally different, uh, you know, uh, pattern. Um, especially for urban freight. Um, when we talk about trucking and we, when we talk about freight, maybe you immediately imagine the, you know, 18-wheeler or large trucks on the street, but in the in, in reality, especially in urban areas, you know, the small trucks, especially like delivery vans or box trucks, are the majority of the urban freight. And they totally operate in a very different um, manner, like the uh, delivery sense, their pattern is like tours, right? They, they stop at multiple locations and then come, go back to the warehouse or the, uh, you know, staging locations. So. Um, so what we uh, try to look at is using the GPS data, which uh, I try to frame this as a uh, special case, a so-called larger um, term called mobile sensing um, data or mobile sensors, right? So those sensors are different from traditional like loops. They're moving with, uh, with, with the cars that they're trying to monitor. So from, from what we can see from here that this, you can learn how the vehicles move or how the, you know, the person move from this mobile data. and. Uh, then you try to crunch, crunch numbers and get to the performance of the system. This is a very critical step. Because when you try to talk about system management or try to get things better, you need to know the first thing is how the system performs, right? Without knowing where the problems are, you know, where, where things are going wrong, you cannot really manage them. Right? So this is the first step. And uh, here we're talking about really, you know, the trucks or the freight. So the first step we try to do is to um, define um, this so-called performance management. What you can learn from or what you want to use um, to, to measure or to uh, look at the uh, performance of the freight. So we try to kind of rather into mobility, energy, and environmental uh, related measures. So mobility, those are the, you, you're a suspect, right? You, we know like speed, travel times. But for urban deliveries, um, one important uh, factor is, as I mentioned earlier, is the tour, right? They, they stop at multiple places and try to deliver things. So another two important uh, measures are the number of delivery stops and also the service time at each stop. So that, that's the key um, and the unique feature of urban deliveries. And also you talk about energy, like you know, the, um, fuel consumption and things like that. And also emissions, you know, the um, different um, aspect of emissions that are coming from these uh, freight uh, uh, trucks. So um, what I'm going to show is really um, the data that you know, we did some uh, research and tried to uh, show you some of the results. So here, it's data from one, um, uh, I would see the trucking companies in the, in the region, uh, due to the agreement, we can, I cannot list the name. Um, I cannot tell you even the locations and things like that. But what I can tell you is they have uh, you know, um, nearly 60 delivery trucks, and they have one warehouse in this area, and uh, they have uh, some truck centers to fix their trucks, and they have some uh, stores in Manhattan, like uh, 150. Um, so we look at data in uh, 2012. Um, we noticed there are uh, more than uh, almost uh, more than 11,000 tours, which means that multiple trucks, they, they, you know, the uh, one truck may um, try to deliver multiple times within a day. So you talk about 365 days, this is how we go. 
Um, so the data we got is so-called even based data. Right? So you have basically a timestamp and also the location. Sometimes you have also have, have the address and also the that long of the, the location. And those things will be basically tagged by the event that happened with this location. Um, either it's a travel start or it's a start or it's a um, you know, ignition off or ignition on, which is the engine status of the, um, of the truck. So if there's nothing happens, then every couple minutes, maybe five minutes, they will uh, also uh, record, uh, you know, to say, okay, the truck is just driving. So um, from here, we try to, you know, to utilize the, uh, take advantage of the, uh, the engine status to say if the engine off, which means they're trying to deliver. This is this assumption um, doesn't account you know, if the truck stops to, to get gas or the driver tries to get to the restroom or something like that. Right? So, but you can imagine in reality if a, a truck driver tries to deliver something under the time pressure, so the chances of it stops to get to the garage or something is, is very, very small. Um, so, um, but we also need to consider Sometimes you have these warehouses, you have truck centers, you need to kind of try to fill out those kind of stops and only look at the so-called delivery stops. So, but as the first step, we try to uh, assume, okay, if ignition off and on, this is a period of time that um, that's the trucks are making deliveries. So, but this simple kind of assumption um, wouldn't work all the time. And we discovered, you know, first we did this um, did the work based on this simple assumption, we noticed there's many, many issues. So some of those I listed here, and I think um, this, many of them has been touched so far in this symposium. Um, the, you know, the first thing is the device may be broken, right? All the drivers may forgot to plug in. It's very simple. You can see, I'm going to see you some of the data. And also, um, we, we talk about the canyon effect of GPS signals in the you know, urban areas, especially in New York City. And, uh, um, so, for the uh, devices that plug, you know, equipped in the trucks, there are special feature like if the speed is too low, the device seems to turn off. You know, they wouldn't re record this kind of you know, low, very low speed um, locations. So, any of those issues will result in a loss of the data, or some noise or error in the you know, data set you have, right? Um, and in addition to those you know, technical issues that uh, I just mentioned here. There's another, in my um, understanding, an inherent issue with GPS data, because this is only data, right? It's, uh, it has to be trans trans transmitted to so-called information, right? So the way to do it is through your knowledge, right? Without knowing what you're talking about, these are just simple numbers. You, you cannot get nothing. nothing uh, out of that. Right. So, so that's the that's the uh, two issues, especially for urban deliveries. The GPS data is very, very um, accurate recording location, although it has noise and everything. But it's very poor in terms of explanation. Why? It tells you what's happened, but cannot tell you why this happened. Right. So um, you know, we're, I'm trying to show a little bit like how we can use um, certain techniques to kind of uh, um, make this a um, little bit better. But still, I I see this is a major issue of um, so you, you want to um, supplement this with this pure GPS data with something else. That can help you to better understand um, the data. So um, I, next three slides, I'll show you some issues like this is an incomplete tour. Um, basically, um, this is a warehouse. Okay? And essentially, you <coughs> imagine the delivery truck will go out to the warehouse and come back. But in, in these two cases, they never come back because maybe the driver forgot to plug in the device and the, the data is lost. It's, it's to be just simple. But this will bring problems if you try to use the data purely to analyze um, the result. Another um, uh, problem is quite interesting. If you look at here, right, so um, it tells you, okay, the driver stops and engine off around 1.10 or 1.15. But <coughs> then it tells you, okay, the engine keeps on and off, right? Sounds like the driver is driving, you know, maybe it stops for a couple minutes and uh, didn't like the location and try to move closer to the store. 
and oh, maybe, maybe you know, slipping around. You never know. Okay. Um, but the uh, we also happen to know the uh, um, some more data, like the, um, the delivery record, like what the driver actually did. So you can see this driver just recorded. Okay, um, he came to the store up around 1:10, which is consistent with what we got from GPS data, and leaves the store at about 2:30, which is exactly close to the last record we saw here. So the driver said, okay, I came to the store at about 1.10 and left the store at 2.30. So it's up to debate, like, uh, did the driver tell the truth? Did he actually, you know, try to find a better location or something? Or simply the, the device has some problems of, you know, mistakenly record the different in on or off. It would be um, interesting to uh, to see if this is really the case. Like uh, in one minute, or in less than one minute, the engine, was, the driver is keeping the on. So this is, um, I would rather trust the the, 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 the you know what's the driver wrote down instead of trust the GPS. Um, another case, as you can see from here, is similar, but this this device keep on off from. A very very long time, and it's actually for a couple of days. Okay. The drivers didn't notice this issue, and uh, we look at the uh, you know the log. Sounds like this driver just did deli normal de deliveries to different stores, but the device obviously broke in this case, kind of you know captured this. So those are the issues, and in order to um, really you know deal with such problems in the data. Which, you know, the lesson we learn is you cannot really just use the data without really checking or cleaning the data. So you have to really try to do something before you can actually trust the data. So what we did is try to, you know, um, uh, I hope you can focus on this part, is really look at the human data and try to first identify stops, use some, you know, algorithms, and then based on that, try to filter stops uh, based on the, uh, on the mouse here. Um, the, uh, the warehouse locations and truck centers and try to remove those uh, stops and then we uh, then focus on the other stops and then try to study what's going on uh, regarding the performance of the, uh, of the system. Um, so uh, the first step is warehouse. Where are the warehouses? Um, so in reality we know um, the exact location. But we try to pretend that we know, we don't know, and we try to detect from the data. Right? So um, here, um, you can um, you can tell the uh, if you think about this, if this is a warehouse, any delivery will be going out and will go back, right? So if you think about the number of stops for a given period of time, who has the largest number of stops? It must be the warehouse, right? So this is one criteria that you can think of. Um, the second thought is. When they get back to the warehouse, they might the they kind of usually you, you do a delivery like for a couple hours. It's kind of imagine that you, you go back and then immediately start start another uh, tour. So the stop usually long. So you talk about long stops, talk about number of stops, right? So um, we apply these two algorithms, two criteria. I don't want to see the details, you know, with some, some statistics, but I just wanted to show you this um, simple. Um, Plot, just you know, two dimensional plot based the number of stops and number of lost stops, right? So the stars serves you the warehouse. As you can imagine, they have the longest, the, the most number of stops and also the, the number of lost stops are also large. So you can, if you are a data, a data mining or the machine learning person, you can immediately see, okay, we can sit perfectly separate those two sets of data. And also the squares of all truck centers, you can see we can somehow also separate those type of separate source. So this, um, as I mentioned, the data has problems, but there's room to use certain techniques like, like data mining techniques, try to make it uh, better. Or try to learn the thresholds that you know you try to apply to kind of distinguish different types of stuff. So um, we do the same for the truck centers and uh, you know we, had, we could identify those locations. Um, so the very simple uh, criteria on the tours, uh, we just get rid of the, you know, any tour that, that you know, stopped at the truck centers. So and just look at the, the 
rest. So um, in the end, we could uh, identify 11,000 uh, plus uh, tours, and we can look at statistics. Um, so the average tour duration is about two hours, a little bit more, and uh, the service, um, you know, the total service time for the tour is about one and a half hours, and the total, the average number of stops for tour is about three. They stopped three times, and average service time is about thirty minutes. So this is only for this, you know, particular target company, and if, depending on the different, um, uh, you know, the goods they are delivered, the sense might be different. Um, I'm showing you some more data regarding the, um, the distribution. You can see more than close to 90% of the tours is five hours. Um, this is the uh, service time, um, 2.5 hours, more than 90%. And um, more than 90% of the tours, they had five or less um, delivery stops. So those are the, you know, statistics you can learn from them. Um, so, uh, this is more, the, more like a big picture of the you know, urban deliveries. What I'm going to show you in the next couple of slides, um, if I still have a couple of minutes, um, to show some more detailed um, modeling regarding the individual cars uh, emission and fuel consumption data. So essentially, um, there are models that have already been developed in the transportation field, talk, of, you know, talk about comprehensive model emission models that if you provide detailed location information like second by second locations and speed, they give you second by second information of your consumption of the vehicle. Okay? Provided you, you, know, you, you give the characteristics file of the vehicle, you know, the type of vehicle and acceleration and things like that. Um, so we just use that model and uh, um, for you know, three tours that we picked from the, uh, from the uh, Unis region, um, that's file, I mean, uh, it's probably a little bit um, um, too much here, but what I'm trying to show is, this is, each line is about a second record, talk about the speed, talk about different type of uh, emissions, um, and also fuel consumptions. Okay? Um, I think this is fuel consumptions. So you have second by second uh, record. You can question about the accuracy of the data, but that's the, what we should ask the modeler you know, of the database. Um, and also you have a summary files regarding you know, how, they, uh, how they use the, all these kind of, uh, you know, for the entire trip, what's the emissions and fuel consumption um, regarding the trip. So we saw this is very useful. Um, the, the, the idea is to compare if you implement off hour delivery versus regular hours, what's the difference that you can bring to the system regarding not only travel times, but also the emissions and fuel consumption. Um, so, this slide summarized, you know, two different tours, three different tours, and you know some of the statistics that we can learn from this kind of system right? regarding the, um, you know, uh, carbon uh, um, dioxide uh, fuel consumption. Okay. Um, in summary, um, for urban deliveries, um, I think we have been uh, struggling for a long time. There's no data, right? The private sector is coming, like share data or things like that. But we could uh, potentially use GPS data for very valuable um, in tasks like uh, um, look at the performance of the, the system. Uh, but I would say cautious to be uh, uh, imposed if, if you try to use the data for your modeling purposes or for your dissimilarity. You have to make, understand there are errors, there are problems with the data. You have to make sure you take those into account um, when you try to use the result and try to inform dissimilarity. Um, and uh, in this regard, as I said, if you try to uh, merge or try to apply certain learning of data mining tools into your data, you can learn a lot um, from the data. But this has to, we have to understand that you need to apply the knowledge. You, can, you cannot just ignore the domain knowledge and only purely look at the data. So there is a way that these two things need to be properly integrated. That's going to give you more than you expected. I think that, that's all.
No, that's that's what Deha gives us. Yes, yes. With, yeah. if, if this spark is delivering something perishable, like fresh food or meat, mm -hmm. then you will have to keep that engine on all the time. Yes. So you have to drive and turn off the engine, you know, to save money mm -hmm. uh, for the fuel is yeah. illegal. Yeah, this um, I totally, I totally agree, and uh, possibly for this, for this uh, truck company, they, they deliver groceries. Right? In most cases, it's not. <laughs> you know, um, this that's the case. Good, but, yeah. uh, this is you, you have a very good point. Is that you have to know what you are talking about, what you are doing, right? So when you get to the GPS data, without knowing the background, but you know, whether you are delivering some first of all, uh, goods or just you know regular grocery, the the the, the, the conclusion you got might be completely off. So you have to know the background. You have to know what you're what, you, what you're doing. I mean, the domain knowledge. You cannot just completely rely on data. So you have to have 